Hello, friend. Hello, hello, hello. We're live now. Um, I'm trying some new software, so hopefully, uh, I think it went well so far. I actually practiced with it and everything. So, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Welcome. Um, so, today we're talking about um, Christmas traditions and in the medieval period, and we're going to be making some wad buttons. So, that's exciting. Um, so I'm just going to give people a second to get here. Um, so also some just something. Uh, I was supposed to have a video out yesterday, but I don't know. I, I have this problem with I have these ideas and then I try to make them happen and then it takes me forever. So <laughs> I'm still editing it. So I, it should be out either tomorrow or Wednesday, depending on if I have time to actually finish it up. So <laughs> So I apologize. I've been trying to get things out on time, but eh, you know, it's been hard because of uh, jobs and everything. So um, yes, I am well. Thank you very much. Good to see you here. Good to see you here. How are you today? Um, getting ready. Um, do you celebrate Christmas um, at all? I know not everybody celebrates, so I want to make sure to acknowledge that. Um, and that's okay. Uh, everybody has their own traditions. I think that's fantastic, you know. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let me bring up my little notes here. Oops. I've got two screens. Oh, there we go. All right. Wait, where'd you go? There we go. Okay. So I'm sure you all are wondering why in the world are you doing 12 days of live streams? Obviously it's a play on 12 days of Christmas. Um, and the reason I'm doing it now and not in the actual time of, cause normally the 12 days of Christmas start Christmas Eve and continue until January 6th, which is uh, epiphany. And um, so I, I had originally thought about doing that, but that meant would mean that I'd have to stream on Christmas. And also what I'm doing is I'm going to be doing a lot of like handmade gift ideas. And the reason I decided to do that was because I, as you all know, I don't know if I've talked about it much, but I am a historical reenactor and I participate in the Society for Creative Anachronism. And one of the events that we do is we have a 12th night event and, and it's really just a time for feasting and celebrating. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll exchange gifts. And so I thought, you know, let's do some gift ideas. And I can, so I thought it'd be good to give you a little extra time <laughs> so you could actually make the gifts before, you know, whatever, uh, either whether, whatever celebrations you have going on, whether it's 12th night or, or Christmas. Um, so yeah, so it'll be, uh, I'll be going over handmade gifts and I'm going to be uh, doing a few uh, tips and tricks along the way. One of the things I'm going to be covering is one of the days I'm going to be talking about how to refresh your feathers. So if your feathers have gotten wet or if they're a little sad looking, we're going to talk about some tips and tricks. I, I have to practice that one a little bit because I'm not quite sure. Uh, it involves a hair dryer and some other things. So I'm not sure how I'm going to make it work. So I got to figure out how to make it work with the live stream situation. Um, so, so that was kind of my reasoning is just to kind of go over and give an idea of what, um, you know, like uh, what you can do and uh, give you time to do it. Uh, so also another thing about these little handmade gifts is they also would be really good for what uh, we call largesse. And what it is, is they're little tokens that are given out by the king and the queen uh, to the populace as they walk around events. And so these are great little things gifts that you could put together and uh, donate uh, to the crown to do that with. So, and one of the things I like about small handmade gifts like this is that some things are not necessarily going to be a historical, actual historical thing, but there are things that I use that look historical 
um, that make my life more comfortable as a reenactor. And I'll, I'll make sure to point those out along the way. But a lot of times those things I want to do, I want to make them look like they fit into that world. So that's kind of uh, my reasoning behind a lot of these things. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be doing wad buttons today. So let's get started on that. So the first step is you want to decide, so these are buttons that would have been used a lot of times in the um, middle, um, basically the 15th century. Uh, so it's a little bit earlier than what we usually cover, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it works out well. And this makes a really great, actually a really good gift. It's a, it's a little bit of work, um, but not too bad. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so you're going to take your fabric. And one of the things I have noticed is, you know, you could do fabric that matches or you can do a fabric that is a contrast, whatever you want. If you're the designer. So you're going to get yourself a circle. And I'm going to use, because this is wool, this is a thick wool, and I have found that the thicker the fabric, the uh, bigger the circle you want to use. Nope. Trying to figure out how to make that one big. Nope. All right. It is what it is. Oh, can I do it down here maybe? Aha! Oh, we'll go to this. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this. Uh, this is a nickel from the United States. Um, and just so you know, it is approximately uh, two centimeters and about three quarters of an, mm, yeah, three quarters of an inch. And draw a circle around that. Cool. Now, once that's done, what I, I'm going to do is I want to put a seam allowance around it, basically. And the thicker the fabric, the less seam allowance you need. The thinner the fabric, the more you need to make this work. Because basically what we're doing is this is going to become our button. And by the magic of television, I have one all cut out and ready to go. Woo! <laughs> all right. So then we're going to take. Here's my thimble. Oh, there it is. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take my. I'm going to take a piece of thread, and this is going to be a long piece of thread, uh, 18 to 20 inches, you know. And then I'm going to go around. The circle that I drew with a running stitch. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about, um, so to the medieval person, the medieval mind, at least in when we're talking about Western Europe um, in the areas that uh, celebrated Christmas. So not everybody celebrated Christmas, uh, but a lot of people did. So I'm going to be talking about the people that did celebrate Christmas and what um, and their view of how things went. So it was a time of celebration. And it, like I said, it started on Christmas Eve and it continued until January 6th, which is uh, the Epiphany holiday. And it's when the wise men or what the so-called wise men, the Magi, uh, went and um, uh, when they uh, arrived at the manger where Jesus was. All right, so I've got my circle completed, and then what I if what I did is I pushed. I want my thread to come out through the outside. This is going to be the inside. So then I'm going to start pulling it, 
I'm going to create like a little cup and I want this to be as even as I can get it. And a lot of times I'll just stick my finger in there because I don't want it to close up. And I'm going to push all of this in. Probably I, this one was a little bit too big on the seam allowance. I'm just going to hold it down with my thumb. Oh, I went, I went a little too far. So I want to be kind of out towards this area. All right. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to cross, I'm going to go across. Put it through and I'm just going to start sewing down all these little folds. Yeah, see the problem is is that I did too big of a seam allowance on it. Oh well. All right. And then come across. Pick up the next piece and just holding down all those little folds with my thumb. Going across. You can even come like this. I find this helps too. Okay, so I've got it held down a little bit. So now I'm going to try to make it like a little star. I'm going to come across here. here go through that and then I can come back around so I'm just going to continue like that <clears throat> so for the folks in the medieval and renaissance and and uh Reformation, all that stuff. Uh, what it was, Christmas was one of the holidays of the liturgical year. Now, I didn't grow up with any of that, so I had no idea what any of this stuff was until I started uh, uh, studying the medieval period. <laughs> so, some of you may know about all this. I know, like I know, like the Lutheran denomination does it, the Catholic denomination does it. But it really had a whole lot of meaning, especially to the medieval Christian mind, the traditions that went along with it. Um, so the cool thing about, so not the cool thing, but so what the reason Christmas was great because a couple of reasons, it followed Advent. And Advent was a time of, of reflection and there was a lot of fasting that happened during that time. And then, and then Christmas would come and, and that all went away and uh, it started to, and then you would, it was a time of celebration. Um, another reason for this was because, you know, in an agricultural society, there's a lot of work to be done throughout the year. And, but when you're in midwinter, there isn't a whole lot of growing happening or harvesting or any of that. So, you know, they could take two weeks off from the fields and be okay. And so this was a time of year when even, and also food wise, they were able to do get a lot of, um, they were finishing off the foods that they had for the year and preparing for a new year. Uh, so the foods were also, um, they were using everything up at this point. So they had some really delicious food that they didn't get to eat for the rest of the year. You know, they didn't have, they uh, were able to eat something other than pottages for once. All right. 
So here is my wad button. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave, oops, I should have tied it off first, oops. <laughs> Let me re-thread re this real quick. And then I'm gonna tie it off. And then, like I said, I leave that on because what you do is you create a bunch of them. I've already created one over here out of blue. And you could just create a bunch of them and then you would uh, give them as a, almost like a little bouquet of buttons. I'm waiting for it to catch up with me. All right, there it is. Um, so these ones are wool, so they're a little thicker, but I also have a linen one here that we're going to play with. So is it amorous, amaris? What's the correct pronunciation for that? Um, where was I? All right, so I'm gonna do my running stitch across here. So <clears throat> Advent was a time of feasting and solemnness. And so then Christmas came along and it was a time of celebration. And the traditions were very different from what we do today. You know, they, we didn't have Christmas trees or anything. Uh, I had it right the first time. So I think I said Amaris, yeah? <laughs> uh, my memory is not great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we didn't, there wasn't Christmas trees. A lot of those traditions started in the Victorian period, uh, but there were still a lot of traditions. They would bring greenery to the, from the outside to the inside. In particular, holly leaves had a lot of, uh, meaning to them. Uh, and then as well as you had mistletoe, there was the Yule log, which was supposed to be a nice, thick, sturdy log that would burn for the entire time of the 12 days of Christmas. So that's pretty crazy. It had to burn for two weeks straight. So they had to find a pretty thick log. And then later on, it became the dessert that uh, many people are familiar with. All right, I've got that going. I wanna get, see I'm coming in here. I'm trying to keep everything as even as possible. So now with the linen, it's a lot thinner so I can actually get it to sit on the inside. Which you can do with wool too, you just have to make huge buttons. So it depends on what size button you want to make. And I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm slowly pulling it in. All right. Holding it with my thumb so I can pull this in. And the cool thing about when you're doing it with linen, you can make some really teeny tiny buttons. Also, <clears throat> okay, so now, see this is so much better. See how it's filling the inside in of the button I'm doing green on green, uh, filling the inside in of the button and that's filling it out. Ameris, uh, okay. Ameris. Sorry. Um, all right. So the other thing I want to be careful as I'm doing this, I don't want the stitching to show in the front. So I'm trying to stay as close to the back as possible here. And I want to, anytime I see like uh, one of the folds that is standing out, I'll go ahead and get in and get that. The cool, the funny thing about um, wad buttons is that um, they're they're really actually pretty hard to button, but when you get ready to take them off, it's like a medieval zipper because you just they just come right out the buttonholes. They stay on pretty good throughout when you're wearing it, and then when you get ready to take it off, they just right off. It's pretty cool. 
<laughs> I understand. Everybody gets my name wrong too. So I get you. So I apologize. So that's my little, isn't he cute? This one, this thread is a bit long. Pretty so. Now, once these are, once you have these done, this is a really long thread. I don't need it to be that long. So, once you have these done, the next thing you do is you leave this thread on because this is how you sew it on. You can sew it on and make a shank with it and everything. So, you've already got it pre-going. So, I'm going to do another one just to kind of give you a good example of what we're doing. Do all right. Oh, nice. Yeah, these would be great on a crochet cape. I'm doing my little running stitch. So the medieval tradition of Christmas, also one of the, an interesting one was uh, they, that's where the, they would have the mistletoe and they would hang it, they would, they would have two wreaths of greenery and they would have an apple suspended from the inside. And then typically there would also be some mistletoe. And what they would do is uh, every day, you know, they would get a standard of the mistletoe for a kiss. And then uh, the male would take, um, would pick off one of the berries and so, oops, I'm out of frame here. And so when the berries were gone, no more kisses. I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Let's see if I have any more notes. So yeah, so Christmas time to the medieval, medieval mind was a great break from the drudgery of the rest of the year. You know, especially when you're living in an agrarian society, you they worked so hard, especially, you know, the, the, the peasants and even the middle class, in particular, the, you know, the farmers and such, they worked really hard. You know, if you haven't, um, I don't know if you all have, I um, if you haven't heard of the series, um, Oh my gosh, it just went out of my head. Tudor Monastery Farm. It's so good. It is so good. It is, they basically, it's my dream. It would be a dream to do this. They go out to a Tudor town. Basically, it's a little Tudor village. I'm trying to remember where it's at or what the name of it is. Um, so they go there and they live, they dress like it. They eat like it. It's Ruth Goodman and her cohorts, and they live that way. I don't know how long they live that way. I think it's for a whole, like a season. It was a while. Might have been a whole year. I think they did it for a whole year. They have many different ones. There's that one, and then there's uh, Secrets of the Castle, which is another fantastic one. I, I believe you can get all, I, I know you can get the Tudor Monastery Format. You can get episodes of that on YouTube. Uh, but it's fantastic because um, you get to see them living that way. And that is my dream come. Oh, I would love to do that to spend, you know, oh, a, an extended amount of time living like that. I mean, that's basically what I kind of try to do. But you know, I live in Southern California, so that we don't have the greatest um, locations for that. So I think it would just be really neat to do it in an actual area that is conducive to it. But anyway, so they spend a year doing that. And one of the, and they do a lot on the Tudor Christmas. So there are some interesting things in that. You know, that's one of the things they talk about. They actually have a historian comes in. I think his name is Ronald Hutton, something like that. Um, and he always talks about uh, traditions and stuff like that.
All right. And there we are. I have another one done. It's cute. So now we have two. And, you know, they go pretty quickly. So you could do, you know, I mean, honestly, though, let's face it. If you're doing a uh, medieval coat hardy, you're looking at mm, 20, 30 of these. But, you know, you could do a dozen. And that would work for, you know, like like you said, like a cape. Um, that sort of thing would be great. A hood. We, something small. So these. And, you know, you could use them. You don't have to use them on medieval stuff could totally use them on modern stuff and be super cute it's just a different style of, of fabric button you know um so yeah so these are how you make we call them wad buttons and these are a great little thing that you can gift to people who do historical reenactment my little bouquet of buttons <laughs> all right so that was my quick live stream for today um i'm just curious though like if you have any questions about um about the buttons or if you have something you'd like if you'd like me to cover um i'm going to be doing some just some stuff that i find useful along the way uh so yeah and it will be uh today i'm at five i'm going to try to be i am actually going to try to do to do it earlier each um most days there are going to be a couple days that i kind of have to do it at a different time like today um but i'm shooting for three o'clock on most days i may not be able to do it every day that time so but keep an eye out if you're subscribed it will give you a notification uh when i go live or when i'm going live and just keep an eye out for those and it was great hanging out with y'all. And I would love to know what are some handmade gifts that you like to make for your friends and family? I need to think of a clever way to sign off. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think of it. So anyways, that's another thing. Help me think of a way to sign off, some, a cool way, you know? <laughs> All right. I am out. See, I am, nothing's coming to me. It will eventually someday. <laughs> so I'd love to know if you have something clever and creative for me to sign off my live streams with. <laughs> All right. I'll see you tomorrow.